Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon Go vlog. This is the end of my fifth week playing this game. 35 days. It is August 12th. A uh, couple things we're going to cover. We're going to cover some news. We're going to cover tips. We're going to cover just my general stories. And we're going to cover my progress on Pokemon Go. First off in the news, uh, there have been a couple patches this week. Uh, in fact, two patches. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the different features, but I think they are moving in a positive direction in terms of stability of the game. I guess the two things I would mention most important to me was fixing the experience uh, and the catch rates uh, that you earn from throwing curveballs and decreasing the escape rate of Pokemon. That was super annoying. Uh, and then the other thing is that they've now changed the nearby list to be a sightings tab. And there's going to be a new nearby feature coming soon uh, where you will actually be able to see what Pokestop uh, is nearest to the Pokemon on your radar. So it'll be interesting to see how this works out here in the suburbs where we really don't have very many Pokestops. Uh, and I hope it's not going to only show us Pokemon near Pokestops, but more on that when it's officially released. Uh, as far as tips go, uh, I released a video and all these links will be able to be found in my playlist. Uh, my 30 day Pokemon uh, Go report. So how does Pokemon Go measure up against my ideal attributes of a Pokemon game? As well as my roadmap and recommendations for changes that I believe need to be made and changes that I think would be nice to have. In the game so check that out if that sounds interesting to you and even if you don't want to listen to the whole video you can always just download the PDF version of the report from the link in that video um, I have separated playlists here on my YouTube page there's two separate playlists now one is gonna be for vlogs like this one you're listening to and the other playlist is just going to be for nests in the Chicagoland suburbs so as of recording this I have 10 videos uh, one of them is not yet aired, it's going to air on Saturday, and that is a Bulbasaur and Geodude nest. Very cool, uh, something that uh, folks have been looking for, and um, so that's a little sneak peek at what's coming. Other nests that are in there include Charmanders, Magikarps, and an amazing, amazing Pikachu nest. The biggest nest I've ever seen with just tons of spawns. Now, how do I get uh, the information about these nests? How do I know where to go to find the nests? Well, it's actually uh, leveraging a number of resources. I just thought I would share those with you again. Uh, probably the first most important one that I go to is reddit slash r slash Pokemon Go CHI. And I try to monitor it maybe once a day and see if people are talking about new sightings. And then I go to a site called ChicagoPokemap.com. Now this is one of the three map resources that I'm going to talk about. This is a crowdsourced map and the only way you can add a pin to this map is if you post on the Reddit a description of what Pokemon you found in what area. Now this map is not real time, it's not live, it's static. So basically if I were to report that there was a uh, a bee drill nest in my backyard I would post that on reddit and once it was confirmed they would add it to this map so this map doesn't change whatever's on there pretty much stays there it won't tell you how many are spawning or where so first thing I'll do if I don't see anything new on the reddit I'll check Chicago Pogo map and try to decide okay where do I want to go closest to my house next and then I will find that location then I'll go over to a site called fastpokemap.com in my mind, this has replaced PokeVision, and this is a making real-time API calls to the Niantic servers, and it will tell you exactly where Pokemon are and how long they will be there uh, within like 50 meters of where you're scanning. Now, this is heavily dependent on Niantic keeping the API alive and the server load of everyone using it, so it can be slow at times, uh, but I have found it to be very reliable. And I also occasionally will check out PokerRadar.io. This is another crowdsourced app, but this one is real time. So anyone who's using the PokerRadar app on their phone can report Pokemon sightings. 
and then those all show up on PokerRadar.io. Uh, it tends to only be like the more important Pokemon, like Gyarados's, Blastoises, and I just check it every once in a while to see, hey, is there anything near me that's worth going for? I've seen some really cool stuff on it. Unfortunately, it has not yet uh, brought me to a nest. This is more about uh, just, hey, what's around? So other than nests this week, uh, I hit a milestone that I've been waiting for for 35 days. I finally got my Gengar, and he is called Level 71 Gengar based on my first ever online screen name related to Pokemon. You can find out more about my Pokemon story in a vlog I did uh, called My History with Pokemon, but I was very excited to catch him. And in terms of my progress, so I am still level 23, I'm about 23 and a half. I have not been using any lucky eggs this week, and I have not caught very many Pidgeys, Weedles, Caterpies. I haven't been grinding Pokemon, I just haven't been in the mood. Uh, I've been really focused on either evolving or seeking out new nests so that I can complete my Pokedex. That said, I am up to 106 out of the 142 possible, so that's pretty good. Uh, I have seen 108, so I've narrowed the gap in my caught versus seen uh, by finding a Machop. And there is a Machop nest video out that will show you where I found mine. Uh, so Machop is found, he comes off of my watch list, and the two Pokemon that I have seen but not yet caught are Onyx and Ammonite. I have seen one more Ammonite on uh, the nearby list. But I was not able to find him. Onyx I have never seen on the nearby list at all. In terms of badges, uh, my Jogger badge is up to 248 kilometers. So that is still an average of 4.4 miles per day that I've traveled. Uh, some of the this week is was, was passenger in a car. Uh, but I have been going out trying to keep up with my walks. Uh, I, my backpacker badge is up to 1,534 Pokestops. That stat actually blows my mind, uh, in general. That's like 50, less, a little less than 50 Pokestops a day. And I got a cool badge. These are always nice when they pop up when you're not expecting it, but I got the Kanto badge, which is catching over 100 Pokemon from the Kanto region. Uh, and again, the way this badge is named, I really hope that means that as they release new generations of Pokemon, that there will be new badges for them. Uh, I also did a lot of data mining of my own app this week, putting it all in a spreadsheet and kind of looking at, you know, how frequently am I catching different kinds of Pokemon and trying to create a forecast of when I will complete my Pokedex. Uh, if you know anything about me, you know that I'm super over-organized like that. But uh, one piece of data that came out of this exercise that I found slightly amusing is that I still have uh, in my collection of over like 1,200 total Pokemon caught, I still have three Pokemon that have not been transferred that have been with me the whole time since day one, uh, July 8th. And that is my Butterfree. And my Butterfree evolved all the way from the base uh, bug Pokemon uh, to the Metapod and to the Butterfree, and I'm pretty proud of that. I also have a, my Pidgeot, which was actually the very first Pokemon I caught was a Pidgey, and then evolved into Pidgeotto and then Pidgeot, and my Nidorino, uh, which this surprised me. Uh, apparently I caught a Nidoran male on the first day, and that evolved into a Nidorino that I still have. And the reason these haven't been replaced yet is because I just haven't had another evolution with as high of CP. I'm sure if I caught one of these three Pokemon today in the wild, their CP would be higher based on my level. But these are the highest that I have so far. So uh, happy birthday to my three oldest Pokemon. <laughs> um, as far as my overall team goes, I know some people are interested in CP. Uh, it's not something that I'm really pushing for, so I'm not using any training on these. These are the uh, CP when they were either hatched, or when they were caught, or when they were evolved. So my highest of all <clears throat> is a Charizard at 1466. Second is a Slowbro at 1422, and a Psyduck is third at 1366 CP. No training for any of these. 
Um, I feel like they're decent. Uh, I probably, if I wanted to be competitive at level 23, these would probably be up in the 2000s, but I'm fine with these. Last but not least, I'm going to show off just a couple pictures from some friends of mine that I haven't talked about before. First, uh, I have Scody Garbidis. Uh, I'm always amused at how people name their Pokemon, and Scody named his based on a naming style somewhat like Garbage Pail Kids. So you can see uh, sort of realistic names, but also play on words mixed in. Very cool. I have a screenshot here from Basket MC. He is new to Pokemon. I don't believe he played Pokemon before Pokemon Go, which I think is pretty awesome and amazing. And he is naming a lot of his Pokemon based on inspiration. So for example, his Tangela is named Spaghetti. Seems appropriate. And last but not least, I got a tweet from Bannerwolf showing off his highest level Pokemon all over 2K. This was a couple days ago, so no doubt they're higher by now. Um, and he is he is definitely going for the min-maxing. So I'd love to get a tweet from you at rsmalik. If you have any Pokemon you want to show off, anything funny or interesting, your highest, your lowest, whatever it is, I will be happy to include it in my vlogs. That is it, I think, for day 35 for week end of week 5. And uh, look for more Nest videos, special topic videos, or vlogs as we go forward. Enjoy your Pokemon going.